So you just bought Kingsbury and you're looking to start painting. Let your imagination run wild. Paint all the things you've ever wanted from the comfort of your home. Now that's the benefit of VR, right? You don't have to deal with external factors, things like heat, rain, or breathing in toxic fumes. Except you realize you don't know how to play Kingsbury. You don't know how to move, select your caps, select your colors. Well, came to the right video. What's up Giants fam? In this week's video, I'm gonna show you all the basics of Kingsbury. Everything from how to move to how to paint online. Now this video is divided up into chapters so you could jump to whatever tutorial you need. And as always, I'm gonna to try to keep these as short as possible. So these tips, no pun intended, start right now. Okay, so you just fired up the game and you realize that your player is frozen still. You can't move around. You move the joysticks around thinking I should move, but it doesn't. Now you do what any natural person would, so you probably get up and you start walking around. Now that'll move your character in the game, but if you don't have a big empty space, you're gonna start running into things. Things like tables, couches, countertops, and you realize this isn't gonna work. Luckily, I've already created a tutorial on how to move in Kingspray. I'll link it up here above and in the description below, but here it is in short. The game works by teleportation. That's right, you're going to teleport around the game and the level to paint and explore each level. Now to do this, for lefties, just press X, and for righties, it's A. You're going to press and hold this, and a blue beam is going to shoot out of your hand. You'll notice at the end of that blue beam is a pulsating circle radar indicating your teleportation spot. Well, upon releasing these buttons, you're going to teleport there. And that's it. Another helpful tip is how to crouch in the game. Now this is going to be the inverse of that. For lefties it's going to be A, and for righties it's going to be X. Now this is helpful because at certain points you're going to want to paint lower on the wall. Instead of bending down, you could just press the buttons and your player will drop down or crouch so you can paint lower areas. Well now that we know how to move and we know how to crouch, well how do we grab objects so that we could get higher up on the wall? Well, that brings me to my next tutorial. Once you start teleporting around, you might realize that you can teleport onto certain things. Now anything you could teleport on is anything you could interact with. Now I know what you're thinking, dang, it would be nice if I could move these things so that I could get higher up on the wall. Well, you can. Kingspray is loaded with helpful things on each level. The devs knew that people would struggle with getting higher up on the wall, so they planted things like ladders, barrels, boxes, and crates. Now, to grab these things, you're gonna do it just like you would in real life, except you're gonna use the grip button. This is where the trigger under your middle fingers rests on each hand. So, just like in real life, reach towards the object, grab it using the grip button, and hold on to it, and you could set it wherever you like by releasing it. Now, I know what you're asking, well, can I teleport while holding objects? And the answer is yes. All you gotta do is grab the object, go to teleport, and as long as you're holding the grip button, you're holding the object, you can teleport with it all around the level. And again, just drop it, set it wherever you need by releasing that button. Another hack is that you could actually stay at those heights without having to use any objects. Now, I've already created a tutorial video on how to do this. I'll link it up above and in the description below, but here it is in short. So to do this, first get to the desired height. Stand on a barrel, stand on a ladder, whatever height you want, and go to teleport. But before you teleport, hold down the crouch button and then teleport and then release the crouch button and voila, you'll stay at the same height that you were as when you left the ladder without needing the ladder or the barrel, whatever you're using. So the key is to hold down the crouch button before teleporting and then let go after you've teleported and you'll maintain that height. If you don't do that, you'll go right back down to the ground level. Again, I've made a full tutorial about this already. So if you need more in-depth details and you want to follow along step by step, I'll link it again here above and in the description below. Now that you know how to move, crouch, interact with objects, and stay at a height without using any objects, let's move on to actually painting in the game. So to start painting, you'll want to select the right cap, just like you would in real life. Now Kingspray has a variety of caps, all of which are based on real life caps, except for the standard cap. I think that's just one that exists in the game. It's a sort of one cap does all, everything from really thin to really fat. 
Now me personally, that's probably my favorite tip. It's the one I find using the most, but all the other tips give really cool effects and um, do different things. Now, if you wanna see each tip in action, click above to see my tip review where I go over each cap in depth. So to select your cap, go to your colors and caps menu on your opposite hand. You'll see a vertical list of caps. So from there, you could just select each one. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, a way that I like, is a little more convenient, is by holding down the grip button on your painting hand and flicking the joystick left and right. This will carousel your caps right above your hand and you can select them right there. This just seems a lot more convenient. I don't have to stop what I'm doing, look to my other hand, select it. I could just do it right there and get right back to painting. An additional tip, no pun intended, is if you hold down the grip button and flick the joystick up and down, this would actually adjust the pressure of your can. Now you could see this being reflected on your opposite hand where the colors and caps menu is. Now that we know how to select our caps, let's move on to selecting our colors. So just like selecting your caps, there's multiple ways on how to select your colors. When you look at your colors and caps menu, you'll notice there's a few color charts. There's a color wheel, a section color wheel, a grayscale chart, and a gradient chart. Now you can choose your colors from any of these options, whichever floats your boat, but there's also another more convenient way to choose your colors, and this time, we're choosing from real life iron lax. With your painting hand, simply move the joystick up and down. This will cycle the cans vertically and by groups. Blues will be with the blues, greens will be with the greens, and pinks will be with the pinks, so on and so forth. Now, every shade of each color will be there as well. All you gotta do is cycle your joystick left and right. Once you find the color you want, just wait about one or two seconds, and boom, your can will turn into that color. You're now painting with a real life iron lac. Now, I believe the game devs are from Australia, which makes sense why they teamed up with Australian artists and brands, Soffles and Iron Lack. But don't quote me on that 100%. I'm like 90% sure that's true. To make your colors metallic, just go to your colors and caps menu, and at the very bottom, there's a metallic bar. You guessed it. Just level that bar up and down, and it'll adjust the metallicness of your paint. So now you've got metallic paint. And throughout the game, you could actually pull colors straight off the wall, so you don't have to always select colors. It'll be nearly impossible to do that, especially if you're using the gradient chart or any of these other charts. Now to do this is a very simple trick. These are the last two tricks I wanna show you when selecting your colors, is how to sample off the wall and how to save them to your color palette. Now sampling colors straight off the wall is very helpful because you're gonna save a lot of time and you're gonna save yourself a lot of stress. You're gonna save time because you don't have to cycle through the cans and you're gonna save a lot of stress because you don't have to get that exact color back from the gradient or any of the other color charts. So to do this, it's a very simple trick. If you're left-handed, aim your can at the color that you want and press Y. If you're right-handed, it's B. And that's how you sample colors straight off the wall. And if these colors are important to your piece, well, you could save it to your color palette on your colors and caps menu. Now to do this, press on the dot that you want to change, select your color, and then press the arrow next to that dot and you'll see that dot change colors, indicating it's now saved to your palette. Now to do this for all the other dots, just repeat these steps, but be mindful, you could only save eight colors. Now imagine you've prepped objects all around your level. You selected caps, you selected colors, and you've been working on a piece for seven or eight hours and then your headset finally dies or some other malfunction occurs and you've just lost all your progress. Well, this is why we're gonna go over saving your artwork in the next tip. This is gonna be an easy one that should go by quick. To save your artwork, pull up your cell phone. Say what? Yes, you have a cell phone in the game. Look at your colors and caps menu and on that hand, move the joystick down. This will turn it into a cell phone. Now, if you move your joystick back up, it'll turn it back to the colors and caps menu. In the cell phone, you have a number of options. Tap around into each one and see what they do. It's all pretty self-explanatory. In the game, your spray can acts as a cursor and your spray button acts as clicking your cursor. One of the options in your cell phone is the save option. It's the one with the little memory card icon. Click into that and your cell phone will turn into a camera. Aim your camera at your piece snap a pic and it'll say saving with a little spinning wheel. Wait a few seconds until it's done and once it's done, it'll say artwork saved. Congratulations, you've saved your progress or your finished artwork. Now these act like save points in the game. 
you can backtrack to certain stages of the piece as long as you snap the pig. So for example, let's say you start doing something and you're not really feeling it and you wish you could go back to your piece to how it was. Well, you can as long as you snapped a pic of it in its previous stage. Simply go to your cell phone and where it says load, tap into that and this is going to create a gallery where you could swipe through your photos. Find the picture you want, click on it and your wall will go back to that stage. Personal tip, save your artwork in substantial increments of progress. For example, I do a quarter of the way through, halfway through, three quarters of the way through, and finally when it's done. This minimizes the amount of photos so it declutters your gallery, and each mural will have four pictures, which is more than enough. Now that you've created and saved your masterpiece, you're probably wondering, well, can I extract it so that I can post it, print it, and share it with a friend? And the answer is yes. This is actually a tip I'm going to go over in my next tutorial. I've actually already covered this in a previous video, so I'll link it above and in the description below uh, so you can see it in fuller detail. And just be prepared for this step, we're going to need a cable, a USB-C to USB-A. And now there's two ways to take a photo, but there's only one way to extract it. The first way to take a photo is click your Oculus button. All the way to the left, you'll see an option to take photo. You could click that, click the Oculus button, go back into the game, and you'll get a five second timer. You'll see this by a blinking red dot, and that'll snap a photo. Now, the second way to take a photo, and this is actually a more high quality, high res option, is go to your cell phone, go to the next page of options, and you'll see take an image or take a photo. Click that, aim your phone, snap a photo, and it'll say artwork saved in your folders. Now to extract the images, any of these two, you're going to connect your headset to your PC and you're going to follow this folder drill down. It's going to be Android data com.infectiousape.kingspray files and then photos and here will be all your photos. If you're having problems, you could check out my tutorial again where I go over it in further detail and you could follow along step by step. The link is here above or in the description below. Another neat feature that you might want to capture is a third person POV perspective. The game automatically makes this for you and it only captures the parts where you're painting. So for example, if you take a 30 minute break to go grab a bite, well the game will only replay you painting so it'll skip that 30 minute break. I'm going to show you how to get this third person perspective in my next tip. Again, I've actually already covered this in a previous video, so I'll link it above and in the description below. Uh, but this part, you'll need to actually record yourself. Now to record, press the Oculus button on either hand and a quit menu will pop up. Right next to the photo option, there'll be a record video button. Press that and you'll notice a little red dot appear in the top right corner of your view. This tells you you are now recording what you see in the headset. Press the Oculus button again to exit the menu and return back to the game. Now go to your cell phone, press the right arrow to go to the next page of the menu items and go to replay. Click that and your wall will wipe clean. Don't panic, the game is just showing you, you painting your piece from the very beginning. It's pretty cool. Now this can take a while, especially if you took a long time on your piece, so be cautious of that. You could also teleport around to get interesting views of yourself painting. Once you've got the content you need, you can stop recording by going back to the quit menu by hitting the Oculus button and press the record button again. The red dot would disappear, indicating that you are no longer recording. Then hook up your headset to your PC and follow the following drill down. Go to Oculus, Video Shots, and your videos will be here, along with any other headset recordings you may have made. If you're having problems doing this, please check out my full tutorial where I go over it step by step. You can see this in the link above and in the description below. I go over it for Mac and PC users. Now that we know how to get images and videos out of our headset, how do we get images into our headset so we can reference them while we're painting? Yes, the video game allows you to reference images just like you would in real life. There's been plenty of times where I'm painting at a wall and I'm looking at my cell phone to reference an image that I'm painting the game lets you do the same thing. So I'm gonna teach you how to insert reference images so you could pull them up in the video game in my next tutorial. You've probably already guessed it. I've already made a tutorial video about this as well. I'll link it above and in the description below, but I'll give it to you here in short. 
Again, if you want to see this in fuller detail and follow along step by step, be sure to check out the videos. This could be a little tedious. Again, this will require you to hook up your headset to your PC via a USB-C to a USB-A cable. Once connected, follow this folder drill down. Android, data, com.infectiousape.kingspray, reference images, and drop your JPEG files here. Now, you should be able to unhook your headset, go into the game, and when you go to your cell phone, you could go to the reference images option and your reference images will be there. Now you can pull an image from real life into the game so that you can then paint it. In my experience, loading reference images can be a little temperamental. Sometimes it likes it, sometimes it doesn't. For whatever reason, I found that loading .jpgs over .jpegs gives me a little more success. For whatever reason, the headset prefers these over those, even though they're both JPEG files. I believe there's a small variation, maybe in the metadata. This is a bizarre issue, but as long as I could get my images into the game so that I could paint, I'm happy. Now, if you know of any other way or any other file format that works, please let us know in the comment section below. I believe we'd all greatly appreciate it. Again, this was a short version of a pretty hard tutorial. I wanted to give it to you nice and short, but if you need a fuller in-depth tutorial where you could follow step by step, be sure to check out my video. I'll link it above and in the description below. Now let's talk about fixing that dreaded network connection loss pop-up when we're trying to paint online. I'm going to teach you how to fix the Wi-Fi connection in Kingspray in my very next tutorial. This is another short and easy one that I've actually already created a tutorial as well, but in short, it's basically turning on and off your Wi-Fi. Well, actually, that no, that's it. <laughs> that That's the full tutorial. Uh, when you're in the game, you're in your bunker right when you load the game. Go to your settings by clicking the Oculus button. Go to settings, turn off your Wi-Fi. Click the Oculus button, go back to the game. Wait about 10 to 20 seconds. Go back to your Wi-Fi settings and turn your Wi-Fi back on and this should fix the Wi-Fi connection issue. Now when you go online, you should be able to see online players and paint online with them. Now this is a short version of this tutorial. It is pretty simple, but if you want to see a fuller in-depth tutorial, click the link above and I'll put it in the description below where you could follow along step by step. But now that we've talked about how to fix our Wi-Fi connection, let's talk about how to actually go online and paint with people. I'm going to cover that in my next tutorial. To paint with others online, you'll need to be part of their crew. Now this is another neat element the devs brought from reality into the game. The idea is that you want to paint with your friends, right? Not people that you're not friends with. So to paint with someone and for someone to paint with you, you need to be friends or in each other's crew. You won't actually come up with a crew name or anything like that for this purpose. Think of it more as like a friend request. To do this, just look at your list of online people and click on request crew. You can also request join to jump straight into the room without being crewmates, but they'll have to approve that first. Once they approve your crew request, you can join them anytime you want and they could join you anytime they want. That's the benefit of being crewmates. We could always paint with each other no matter what, unless the room's full, there's a four painter maximum for each room. Now, if people start crashing your room inappropriately, being rude or messing up your paintings, you can block them by removing them from your crew. Just go to your cell phone, find the person you want to remove from your crew, tap on them and to the left, you'll see a button that says remove from crew. This will make it so they'll always have to ask your permission to join your room and it's up to you to say yes or no. So that's how you join people's crews and join people's rooms. Well, what if you want to host your own room? Well, you can. Simply go to the online lobby, look at your cell phone and go to the locations button. Click on it and you'll see all the levels. Choose a level that you want to paint in and you'll go to it. Now you're officially hosting an online room. Your crewmates can enter any time and people that aren't in your crew will send you a request to join your crew or your room, so keep an eye and an ear to your notifications. To join someone else's room, look at your phone on the list of other online players, and if you're part of their crew, you'll see a join button. If you're not part of their crew, you'll see a button to request crew and request join. Now it's up to the other person to approve or not. So that's how you paint online. You could join existing rooms. If you're crewmates, you could jump right in. If you're not, you'd have to be approved. 
And if you wanna host your own room, just choose a level, go to it, and you're now hosting a room. Whatever it may be, I hope your experience is positive. We all know graffiti could be a rough scene, and I hope to see you online. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's video. I hope you found it helpful. I try to cover all the basics for beginners using King Spray. And as always, I try to make these videos as short as possible. So if you are liking my videos, please hit that like button, drop a comment below, and as always, subscribe. Anything that helps boost the algorithm goes a long way for me. And if you have suggestions or if you want to know other things about King Spray, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Other than that, happy painting. I wish you well, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.